Good morning. It's hard to believe that this time next week we're going to be in the midst of Holy Week when we celebrate the, the passion of Christ who was betrayed, he was denied, he was uh, ex- experienced excruciating pain. He died upon a cross so that we can have life and have it abundantly. That's the hope and the promise that comes through us from God's word and through the Holy Spirit. I want to share just to, uh, over this, uh, the last several weeks, I've been sharing the last words of Jesus from the cross. And this past Sunday, I talked about um, the, the very short, simple phrase, I thirst. Jesus' words as he hung there on the cross and he, he uttered these words as, as he was in agony. And so most of my sermon on Sunday was about the suffering and the agony of Christ. And this is the only time that he even mentioned his own suffering. Uh, he, he didn't complain about the pain or anything else. He simply said, I thirst. I want to share a scripture with you uh, this morning um, that is um, relevant to this. And I didn't mention it in my sermon. That is the story of the woman at the well. We find that in John chapter 4, where beginning in verse 4, it says, Now he had gone, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I thirst the words of Jesus. And now we're talking about living water in this passage that quenches a thirst and will never, never uh, experience again. The woman at the well was, was promised that if she drank from the well that he provided, the water that he provided, that is his spiritual truth and, and his power and the Holy Spirit, that she would never thirst again. A couple decades ago, I was part of a prayer conference, and the speaker's name was Sammy Tippett. He's a traveling evangelist. He's traveled all over the world. He's, he has worked hard. He is on the go constantly. And he shared about one day he was walking through the airport in uh, some American city, and I don't remember which city it was, and he simply collapsed. He fell, fell on the floor. He couldn't move his legs. He couldn't walk. He just was immobilized there lying on the floor. They took him to the hospital, they evaluated him, and the doctor said, basically said, that you're burnt out, that your body has given up, your body has collapsed under the stress that you have put under uh, upon yourself. And Sammy Tippett, as he told this story, said, I also realized that I was not suffering from burnout. He says, I was suffering from dehydration. Now, he wasn't talking about a physical dehydration. He wasn't talking about that his body didn't have enough fluid, but rather he was talking about the spiritual dehydration, that he had been working so hard, traveling all over the world, doing the things of God, and yet he was spiritually drained. He was emotionally drained. He was running on empty. He was dehydrated by the Spirit of God. Now, that can happen to all of us. When we try to exist on our own power and our own strength, something that we really can only do for so long, rather than drinking at the well that Jesus talks about with the Samaritan woman. We need to sometimes set aside some of the tasks that we have, and we need to dwell in the Spirit. We need to experience the freshness and the refreshing uh, uh, water that comes from Him. 
Many of you thirst. I thirst as well. I thirst for the things of God. And a lot of times we don't even recognize it. We don't even realize and see the problem. We just think we're tired. We think, well, we're, we're worn down, that, that we've been overworked lately. We need a vacation. We need to change our priorities a little bit, shake things up a little bit, and then things will get better. And maybe a little of these things are, are, are true, but mostly we thirst because we thirst for the only thing that will bring true refreshment to our soul, and that is the living water that comes from Jesus. Are we lacking that living water in our lives? Are, have we pushed it aside? Have we discounted it? Say, well, it's really not that important to us. And then we're trying to do things on our own steam, our own energy. And in the process, we just can't do it anymore. The living water comes from him. It brings refreshment. May God bring this refreshment to your soul today. Amen.